Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalei Zadon. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, with another exhibition match. This time, one between 400 and Gaia Up, which started a bit weird because apparently Gaia had some connection issues and couldn't get their count commander, but whatever. That works. So, Gaia Up going for Amphib Factory, while 400 also going for Amphib because this is Onyx Cauldron, and Onyx Cauldron has this giant lake in the middle, and everyone likes to go Amphib in order to work with it. Which makes sense. Anyway, we have... Oh, sorry, shields. What am I saying? That's not Amphib, that's shields. It's the other side of the Dominatrix. For those of you not familiar, the Light Vehicle Dominatrix Factory is a combination... Well, it's... It actually is a combination of those two. The Amphib plant and... I believe it's the Amphib and shield plant. I'd have to double check. I think it's actually... I don't actually double check that. I'm pretty sure they are both part of it, but... I'm not entirely sure which side's which. Or if that is entirely correct. Anyway. 400 starting out. Pretty strong energy-wise. Well, pretty strong economically in general. They have not really gone for raiding. A couple ducks, but that's about it. Whereas Bandit's coming in for Gyop. And also going a little bit more conservative with their energy with the solar plants coming out from the start. I mean, wind generators on this map aren't great at this level. If you're putting on the cliffs back here, yeah, it's awesome. If you're starting position, they're good. They're not great. They're also really vulnerable. So if these Bandits get into the base, 400's energy economy is dead. See how that goes, though. And 400 should be able to set this up pretty easily. I mean, you know, a couple ducks. Actually, oh, wait, no, that's right. Yeah, what am I saying? No, never mind. Bandits are going to have an, a field day because, of course, bandits don't get one shot by ducks. They don't heal up, but they don't get one shot either. So they can actually just deal with ducks. And a conch going down right at the start. So 400 losing an early worker. Well, at the same time, Gaiop is able to build up more, so this is working out very nicely for Gaiop and a Metal Extractor kill, too. Just for good measure. So 400 behind, well, about even on economy. Gaiop, they made their bandit pay off. Yeah, that's really all that can really be said about it. It wasn't, it wasn't like a super spectacular rating, but it worked. It did the job. It got rid of a worker, got rid of a Metal Extractor. It's going to slow down 400. Yeah, good job. So Gaiop just needs to take advantage of that, and indeed they are. They do have a convict forward. One convict, though, so they're still going heavily for aggression. Never mind, two convicts. So they have the two convicts going around the map. Still, however, they are heavily on aggression. They're probably going to do another raiding pass. Take this bandit home. Get a bunch of others to replace it. And they should be able to get through the ducks, no problem. And then from there, just a matter of pushing beyond that. 400 has no static defenses whatsoever, so Gaiop should be able to just do this. No issues. Uh, at the same time, though, there are some boys coming up for 400, which... That'll help. But with the sheer number of bandits coming in here, I don't know how much it'll help. Because, I mean, bandits 1v1 ducks and win. As demonstrated just there. Bandits win 1v1s against ducks. So, boys aren't a bad idea. Scallops would really be the thing I'd go for, personally. I don't see the point of going for ducks here. I mean, get enough of them, yes. But they cost as... Actually, they cost a little more than a bandit. So, really... Actually, wait. For it by speed? No, ducks are slower, too. So, yeah. Bandits totally beat ducks in a 1v1 situation. And it's impossible to get more ducks than bandits for the same cost. So, short of 400 having an overwhelming economic advantage, and they do have an economic advantage, but not overwhelming, and they're not pushing more... Like, they're only pushing 17.5 metal into their factory. Gaiop's pushing... Or will soon be pushing 20 metal per second into their factory once they're done. The Scaretaker. So, Gaiop will have no problem outproducing 400 bandits to ducks. 400 really should go for scallops. Boys aren't a bad idea either. They do manage to live long enough. They should be able to kill the ducks, but scallops, riot units, just shotgun the ducks to death. Oh, sorry, shotgun the bandits to death. They work against ducks too, but shotgun the bandits to death. And Gauss turret coming in over in the north side. I'm curious about this. I'm not sure if it's meant to kill the bandits in the line. I don't know what exactly that... You know, I haven't seen Gauss used in a long enough time that I can't remember if it was nerfed to not pierce shields anymore. I think it... I think it bounces off of shields. But I'm not sure. Anyway, local advantage going 400. Okay, so 400's duck strategy. It can work in situations where there is a local advantage for the ducks and the bandits are kind of clumped up. That's fair. I didn't really think of that. But at the same time, Guy up now finally getting the production into a fusion plant? Wow, this is an early fusion plant. That's a bit team play. 
This is a 1v1 guy up. This I'm not sure if guy up plays a lot of team play or team games. Like in team games, it would make sense five minutes in to throw down a fusion reactor because you have your teammates covering you, and actually by that point you pretty much have to. You'd have probably 40, 50 metal per second in a lot of cases. But this is risky in a 1v1. I think it'll work out though. But it's not so much a matter of you know will it get built. It'll obviously get built. It's the matter of is it going to cost guy up everything else that they have because they just lost the northeast. They're having a very hard time holding the southwest. 400s being able to just get around everything they're throwing at them. I mean, Gaius not really throwing anything at them anymore anyway. Yeah, that's what I thought. Gauss is... So, chat confirming that Gauss is in fact stopped by shields. That's what I figured. It was just like a year and a half ago that that change was made, and Gauss is not used all that often. People don't use daggers very often. Gauss turrets are used occasionally, but it's usually as part of a corridor to kill heavy units. Like, you have a couple Gauss turrets and a couple Faradays, and you just shoot them dead. That happens occasionally. It's really cool when it does, but I don't see any heavy units coming in anytime soon, so I'm not sure what the point of that Gauss is, other than just, you know, damage. I mean, it's still damage. It's still static defense. It's hard to kill static defense, too, especially a Sky Gauss. So for that end, yeah, yeah I can totally understand. I just don't know why you wouldn't go for, like, Stardusts or something else. Gauss is just unusual. But it's not bad. It's just not something typical. That's all. Anyhow, Guy Up now getting their production going, but at the same time, 400 does have their economic advantage and does have much more production going on here. 32 build power compared to, it looks like 30, it looks like 40 here. Well, an attempt at 40, but it's actually... No, it is 40. Attempt at 45, but it's actually 40. Oh no, I was counting the comic. Yeah, so it's 40 build power here. Guy Up does need to get a bit more money, though, if they really want to keep that going consistently. And 400, they are accessing, so yeah, that's... Production advantage is still about even. But in terms of unit composition, Gaiop is going for the bandits, and not much has really been done to deal with them. The ducks aren't going to help. A bunch of boys coming in, but now we have thugs. Although, that being said, thugs are actually a bad choice here, because the slow damage from the boys will heavily damage the shields. Oh, yeah, they did go... Oh, good point, they did both go early fusion. Wow, that's... That is unusual. It makes more sense for 400. They have a very nice overdrive grid for Guy Up. They've barely got anything. They have something of an overdrive grid, but it's not quite as much. Also, 400 just has a stronger energy economy in the first place. At any rate, the Southwest has been taken by Guy Up. They just need to build it up, and they are in fact doing so. So the Southwest is Guy Up's. The Northeast is 400's. I say Guy Up really won that exchange. And at this point, Guy Up putting some pressure on the Northwest or Northeast, which should help quite a bit. At the same time, though, uh, the boys... Yeah, the boys definitely proven my point. That is that is the way to go to deal with the bandits. It's a bit of a fight of attrition, but the boys will win. Or at least will take out a lot of the bandits, forcing the bandits to retreat. But now with the thugs coming in, this is what I mean. Because boys, they deal 150 damage on their own, but 250 slow damage. So, remember, you divide by 3, that damage is dealt directly. That's... 83 damage, so it's 233 damage dealt to shields every time they hit a thug shields. So six shots kill a thug, or destroy a thug shields. They don't kill the thug, but they destroy the shields completely. It's actually not as big of a deal as, say, Venoms, or things that are uh, other units like that that are all about slow or all about paralysis. Usually it's paralysis or disarm. Well, EMP or disarm. That's usually what does it. And yeah, 400 is... Yeah, point out, we got stingers around north, and Chad's pointing out the heavy turrets. We have the Gauss, we have the stingers, we have stingers down in the south here as well. That's a very good point. 400 is really going for that. And Arch is coming in to try to get rid of Gaius Commander. Not really helping too much, but they are forcing Gaius Commander to an uncomfortable position where the boys will be able to finish it off, and down it goes! So Gaius Commander down. The southwest is going to be a lot harder to set up for Gaius, and they're still behind economically. 400 winning the economy war but might be losing the Northeast pretty soon. Stardust is up. That, I don't know if it'll do enough. I mean, it's definitely dealing some... Oh, yes, it'll do enough. What am I saying? Why am I being uncertain about... Oh, no, never mind. No, it doesn't quite do enough. It's very difficult for it to die, but, yeah, it's gone slowed down. The outlaw will eventually kill it. But yeah, unfortunately, the, the Southwest now being lost... Or at least heavily contested. Without the commander there to easily hold it, there's not a whole lot that can be done. It's just... I mean, what, that's that, Really, that's it. 
there is a convict that is building up. That's good. But without having a commander, it's very difficult to actually set things up that in a way that doesn't fail. And also, Lotus getting rid of that outlaw, so stopping the Stardust from being killed. There's no easy way on the ground for Gaiup to deal with that. And Gaiup continuing to focus entirely on shield, not getting any air. While at the same time, 400 is switching to gunships, getting a lot of, well, will soon be getting Banshees, as well as getting the Grizzly on top of that. So overall, Gaiup is... Gaiup is building up to basically break this, sorry, to be broken down. 400... 400, if they just have one good push, will win this game. Guy up. at this point, it looks like they have map control, kind of, but it's very frail. There's the one Lotus, and at this point... Actually, the Southwest might be taken back. But the Northeast is still a bit of an issue. Actually, no, never mind. No, 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 no. Guy up is managing to get back in here. Guy up does have a bit of a chance. I mean, it's a, it's tricky. And I don't think Thug Law is the way to go. But they do have a bit of a chance here. They are, however, going to be fighting a very long war of attrition if they expect to win this game. You might be aware of that, but they have taken the Southwest again. Their army managed to make up for the lack of commanders, so Guy up now secured the Southwest. My earlier comments were a little premature, because honestly, Guy up still still has a chance. 400 with the economic advantage is going to be tough to deal with. Now that that economic advantage has been translated to production advantage, and these Banshees, Banshees with the Grizzly, are still going to be a challenge to deal with. I mean, that being said, it's actually a good case for the shields, because 1,500 damage against 1,250 shield is not going to be that great. Nice reclaim, too. Okay, so at this point, Guy up just doing the reclaim army. The Felon's way behind, though, and Felon's actually going to the southwest, which I agree with, because the Grizzly's not going to fall to the Felon anytime soon. But the Thug Law does have a bit of a chance. And now that the Grizzly's aware of it, well, it's made known, really the thing is the Banshees. If the Banshees are made known, then what is the response? And the response is not, oh, the response is going to be up in time. Vandals are being built up, and Guy up with all this extra cash. Like, Guy, up, Guy up is pretty flush with metal right now. I mean, not right in this instant, but they got a lot of reclaim to work with. Still have a lot in storage. So these Vandals, well, it's eight so far, and they're building up, like, one every few seconds. Still tough, though. There are gonna need... There, there's gonna need to be a lot of them. And also, unfortunately, some damage being dealt to Gaib's economy, so Gaib's static economy falling behind quite a bit. Thanks to those Banshees. But still, the Vandals, are they gonna be able to get rid of them? Oh, they're not focusing. Unfortunately, the Banshees are still able to get a lot of damage in. Going for the fusion plant, I don't think the fusion plant's gonna fall, but if it does, that would basically spell the end of the game. And no, it doesn't. Good attempt by 400. Definitely the right target. That explosion would have probably killed most everything here. But it didn't quite do it. So, at this point, Guy up managing to split the southeast from the south, sorry, so southeast from the northeast. A little bit, not especially well, but definitely working to try to do that. Of course, the problem is that Gaiap's Grand Army is kind of split up. I mean, there's a bit to the north, a bit to the south, a lot of Vandals with the anti-air, but no real push. Gaiap is just, they're, they're bunkering down. And again, the chainsaw, they want to make sure that they're actually able to hold the lines. I don't, okay, this, this E split, bit of a distraction. Are they going to take advantage of it, though? And indeed they are. At least they're working to. The the Banshees will probably not be distracted easily, but everything else, yeah, they're essentially working to get rid of everything else. 400 took the bait, and Gaiap should be able to march forward without a massive amount of resistance. Some resistance will, of course, come up. Oh, yeah, and the metal donation of the Banshees, that's another thing, too. That was a bit of a mistake. I mean, I get the idea. The idea was to kill the fusion reactor, try to deal with that. The problem is just that the Vandals came up in time. Gaiap just happened to have the Reclaim and the Stored Metal to allow them to build up enough Vandals that the Banshees couldn't do much. That's actually a situation where I would say, you should have gone for a Black Dawn. And that's me saying it. I mean, I mentioned before that I love Banshees, but that was a Black Dawn kill. Oh, but Gaiap, why are you not attacking? This is the perfect time! There's nothing in the main base, or hardly anything in the main base. The Banshees are still distracted. I mean, the Banshees aren't really a big concern, but everything else is still distracted. Go for the kill! I realize it might open up a base trade situation, but... Hopefully there'll be enough in the north at some point. But yeah, go for the kill anyway! Your, your unit's too far away to save your pace regardless. Just go for it. 
And indeed they are. So, guy should at least be able to deal with this. And they are taking some damage to the north side, and they're probably going to rebuild some stuff. Oh, getting swifts as well. So that's not a bad idea. Not the best idea, though. I mean, they are still having to deal with the boys. The That'll be a problem. Regardless, Kaiob's main base should be safe enough. The Banshees are one of the bigger damage threats. So if those are gone, or at least distracted, that should be fine. Really, it's just a matter of slowing things down. 400, obviously their main strategy here is just get in here, rip apart Kaiob's base. Sorry, Kaiob's strategy, rip apart 400's base. Get through everything here, get rid of the... Whoa! Oh, I guess they were building blast wings. I didn't even notice. But yeah, get through the blast wings. Kill that done. Or kill that stuff. Get that done. Give me better diction, because apparently my diction is completely horrible right now. And more blast wings going down. Wow, there's a lot of stored blast wings that really didn't help at all. Not a bad idea, but unfortunately, bad timing. Or rather, really good timing on Gaiab's part. Oh, the fusion plant. Bit too close to Gaiab's army. Still... Great kill, managing to do what 400 did not manage to do. 400, however, is going to go for that last-ditch effort to try to maybe get the base trade. That's really all they have at this point. I mean, their factory's done. All the, They've already lost the gunship plant. The amphib plant going down as well, so... Oh, more for the fact that they're shooting each other. Darn you, thugs. Who knew a unit called a thug would be so traitorous? Actually, that doesn't make sense at all. They'd just be mean. Anyway, the Wolverine... Oh, yeah, there's the Wolverine. It was under production. It is up. It is able to deal some damage on the Grizzly. But still, this is, like I said, a potential base trade situation. 400's lost their base. If Gaiop can protect their own base, as long as their base can survive, the Wolverine can do a couple more drops. And there's another attack. Okay, I see going for the boys instead. Oh, this is still going to be tough. That fusion plant... That fusion plant's under great threat. That fusion plant's going to go down. There's the shot that'll kill it. And this is potentially the base trade. Gaiop still has their factories, though. 400 did rebuild the proxy proxy amphib plant. But, oh, that air factory is still up. And with that still up, the Wyvern's still able to do stuff. Still able to stuff the boys. The Grizzly's not moving in. And, of course, the Racketeer's also helping out as well to disarm. But the Grizzly... One more shot, though. It's... Oh, going for the Razor. That was a mistake. It can hit the Shieldbot factory. I don't know if... Can they see the shield bot? Yeah, they can. I don't know why it's going for the razor. Finally going for the shield bot factory, but it's going to get... Oh. Nope. It just got out of range of the shield bot factory. That was so close. It could have killed it. Could have killed it right before getting disarmed, but it did not. 400 moved it away. Didn't manage to sneak that little kill in. And I think that'll be game. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. 400 still has the economy somewhat. Gaiab has an economic advantage, but 400 is not out yet. They have production. They lost their main base, but they still have control over it. They could send a couple workers back and rebuild it. And indeed, they're doing so. So 400's not out of the count, not down to the count yet. They're not out of this. They're not in a great position, but they're not out of this either. Gaiab's way behind energy-wise. And forced to excess metal. So right now, 400 actually does have an economic production advantage. So that's the thing, is... I mean, it's working out. 400 could have dealt with that. I mean... Targeting the factories, I don't know what they're... They, they weren't really focusing on this so much. If they had moved forward, targeted the factories, just swept in rather than fight move, they would have been able to get through and kill everything. But unfortunately, they didn't, and that left 400 basically wide open to be destroyed, as they are now, the Wyvern, doing work. That Wyvern doing a lot of... Or Wyvern. That Wyvern doing a lot of work. It almost single-handedly saved the base on it. And on top of that now, with... All the damage is doing here. Gaiop's main weakness now, of course, being the lack of energy. Desperately trying to rebuild or build up some solar plants. But honestly, they almost might just want to build a crane and get a bunch of wind generators on the cliffs here, because that's very difficult to deal with. I mean, I'll grant that 400 had a gunship plant, but it's gone now. So 400 has no way of dealing with that. And now 400's factory getting assaulted once again, and if this goes down, and the commander goes down as well... I mean, 400 still has some workers around the map, so there's still the option, but it's tough. Like, Gaiop, they're not as far ahead as they might... Th I don't know if they think they're far ahead. I, I mean, they're not that far ahead, but they are still somewhat far ahead. Oh, and that Wolverine... Don't go down, Wolverine! If that Wolverine dies, that's... 
that's really going to put a massive blow into Gaiab's plans to get back in here, especially since they are losing so many solar plants. And they're just lost to the workers building the solar plants. Not building on their main base, I don't know why. Gaiab? Okay, why are you building a bunch of caretakers? What are you building for? You have no energy. Build up energy. Build up power plants. You... This is very confusing. I do not understand the thinking. On both sides, but especially right now, Gaiab not immediately rebuilding power plants. They must have gotten really tired and not focused on the fact that they're out of energy. And also, apparently, they have metal extractors for their opponent being built in their own base. But yeah. Gaiop is actually losing this, despite some... I mean, they saved their base, had a really good base trade. But no, they're thrown in the towel because they just didn't have a whole lot to work with. I mean, granted, 400 had the economic advantage the entire time, but Gaiop had some really good plays going on in the south and southeast got rid of the base didn't manage to get rid of this though which is a bit of a problem and the attack did cause problems that would have been a full base trade but really guy up could have just rebuilt energy really early on it was just a timing thing i feel like that was a lot of it a lot of both both players being very timid with how they played but it looks like 400's timidity wasn't as big of a problem so they ended up redeeming themselves from last game although admittedly these weren't played back to back in real life but whatever as far as the cast goes, they redeem themselves. Anyway, next game is going to be between... Let's see, who is it? It's going to be between Toph and Aquanim. So, a bit of a more lopsided match, but... Yeah. Anyway, that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.